So you are starting your wavy, curly, coily, kinky hair journey and you need to know where to start. So in today's video, I am going to break down my best and favorite tips for what to do when you are starting that journey. So we're going to break this down into three categories. Unfortunate, kind of fortunate the finger though. I'm not giving that to you, just showing. <laughs> Okay, so three categories. I'm, I'm in a mood, I'm sorry. Things were going to stop. No more, goodbye, done. So things we are going to stop. Category two is things we are going to buy. What is it that we need to effectively and sufficiently start this curly hair journey? The third and last category that we're going to break this down into is what are we gonna do? What are we gonna stop? What are we gonna buy? And what are we gonna do? Those three, let's dive in. But really quick before we do, I am going to be in San Diego on December 8th. I have partnered with my friends Angel and Lauren and we are hosting our very first main love events meetup. This event is going to have food, curl talk, a curly hair panel, all curl types are being represented at this event. We have sponsored giveaways, full size products in those giveaways and a ton. Plus the goodie bags that you will go home with are absolutely amazing. So if you live in or near San Diego and you are available December 8th, we would absolutely love to see you there. I will put all of the info and where to get tickets in the description. Before we jump in, the first thing I would like to preface is that it takes time to get healthy hair from root to tip. The the really one and only exception of that is a big chop. Even then, it sometimes can take time for the curl to find its way back. And as always, every single thing that we talk about is not an end all be all, and it's not necessarily going to apply to every person. So if it does, great. If it doesn't, forget about it. <laughs> all right, let's jump in. Things we are going to stop. In the name of the heat and chemical styling. I know we don't all love to hear this. I didn't either, but the truth is, is heat and chemical styling can and does damage your hair, especially over time. And if you are trying to get your curl back, if you are trying to get from damage to healthy hair, one of the best things that you can do is put those things down. That doesn't necessarily mean it has to be permanent, but in my opinion, one of the best things that you can do to give your hair a break and a boost is set those to the side for a bit. We are going to get rid of sulfates, and silicones. Bye. Sulfates are a very harsh detergent and they're found in pretty much every shampoo that is not a sulfate free shampoo, right? Um, gets everything out, but it is extremely harsh. And if your hair is already dry, you don't need it. Silicones. Here's the thing with silicones. They're kind of like a plastic that coats your hair. <laughs> um, that is the simplest way to explain them. There are different types of silicones, some that are water soluble, some that evaporate, and others that just stay there forever. So if you are not familiar with silicones, familiar with the different types, what they do in your hair and how you can remove them, the last thing that you should be doing is using them. I am not against and actually enjoy using silicones on occasion, but I have a, a pretty basic understanding of the different types of silicones, how my hair responds to them and how to properly remove them. Two things at bare minimum that I think every person should have a basic understanding on before using them. So until you do, put those silicones away. You're going to stop using standard terry cloth towels. No more. If you are already experiencing dry hair and having a hard time maintaining moisture in your hair, the last thing that you wanna do is use something like a terry cloth towel that is so absorbent to suck out more moisture from your hair. No way. I am personally of the opinion that using nothing is best, but I know that doesn't necessarily work for everyone. You can sub it out for a t-shirt, a bamboo towel, something similar. You can also use a microfiber towel. I would be cautious on those. They are much more gentle on the hair cuticle, but they still can be extremely drying and too much for some people's hair. No matter what, get rid of your standard towel. We are going to stop cleansing our hair daily. There are 
rare exceptions to this rule of people that need to wash their hair daily. And sometimes there might be a scalp condition. Um, you might be working out heavily on a daily basis. In a, I know some people that are swimming on a daily basis. There are exceptions, but if you are not that exception, one of the best things that you could do, in my opinion, for your hair and its health and maintaining moisture is stop cleansing it on a daily basis. Our curls need moisture and even the most gentle cleansers without sulfates can still be too drying on your hair on a daily basis. Okay, the fun part, things we are going to buy. So I am going to break down the types of products that I think that every wavy, curly, coily, kinky should have in their arsenal. I'm not going to name products because this is going to vary for each person, but I will link some of my favorites for each of these categories down in the description. So the first product that I think that every, I think every person should have this, this isn't just a, a curly hair thing, every single person should have this, is a clarifying shampoo. So I know you're gonna be like, oh Janelle, you said we're, we're not gonna do sulfates anymore. This is going to be the exception. Clarifying is exactly what it sounds like. It is literally just removing dirt, oil, products that have built up on your strands and scalp. In addition to a clarifying shampoo, if you have hard water, I highly, highly, highly recommend finding a chelating shampoo that not only clarifies your hair, but also removes hard water buildup. There are only certain types of ingredients that can remove buildup, and there are only certain types of ingredients that can remove silicones. So you do need a specific cleanser labeled clarifying slash chelating in order to remove this buildup. This clarifying and or chelating shampoo is not to be used on a regular basis. This is just a good starting wash and then good to do once a month, once every other month. You'll have to figure out what's the best balance for you. We are also going to buy a sulfate free cleanser. This can be a foaming or non foaming cleanser. You have to, will have to decide what works best for you, but this will be your regular use cleanser. We are going to purchase a silicone free conditioner, deep conditioner, leave in, co wash, and gel. So every single one of those products, you want and need those to be silicone free. The longer you are on your curly hair journey, the more likely you are to find product combos and products in general that you like and dislike. This grouping of product types is a pretty basic and hard to go wrong with starting lineup. We are going to buy a satin pillowcase. This is probably one of the most important things is how you sleep on your hair. Not only does cotton suck the moisture out of your hair, but also because of how it's woven, it is so rough and damaging on your hair. Not only is it going to cause frizz, but it is in the long run causing tangles and breakage. Stop sleeping on a cotton pillowcase. No more. Satin today. <laughs> you can find them for less than $10. Bed Bath & Beyond has them. I have them in my Amazon shop. All different colors, all different styles. You can also go for a silk. I've never used a silk pillowcase because they're expensive, but I've heard decent things. Um, so either or, but that happens tonight. Whatever night or day that is for you, make it happen. <laughs> I mean it. All right, it's finally time for what we are going to do. So first thing, get a trim. <laughs> if your hair is dry and damaged, cut some of that damage off. Whether you just cut little bits at a time, whether you big chop, um, trim your hair, trim it regularly. We are going to learn about our own curl type. They fall on a scale. <laughs> it's more detailed than that, but really they fall on a scale. Just Google curl types. There are a ton of photos. There are pencil drawn images in addition to photo images for comparison. Figure out what your curl type is and it can be multiple curl types. People will tell you that this doesn't matter, but I'm personally of the opinion that it does. The more information that you have about your hair, the more likely you are to find um, research methods, etc., that actually apply to your type. One of the first things I did when I discovered my curl type was I got on Instagram and found other curlies that had my curl type. Shout out 
Curly Sue 291, Miss Elaine, and finding that person with my curl type, although we have a lot of other factors, it started to narrow down the types of products that would likely work for my hair, the types of styling methods, techniques, etc. But then also I had a reference point that actually looked somewhat similar to mine. Versus before that, I was looking at curls that were nothing compared to mine, trying their techniques and methods. And although some of them work, so many were so far off and I ended up spending more time and money than I needed to. So do not throw out understanding your curl type. I really would say start there. We are going to research before we try and buy. This goes right along with understanding your curl type. But not only do you need to understand your curl type, but it's also very helpful to understand your porosity type. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, that doesn't surprise me and that's okay. I did an entire video on porosity and I will link that here. Understanding your porosity type gives you a good idea of how your hair absorbs moisture and it also helps pinpoint the types of products and application techniques that are likely to work for your hair. So knowing your porosity before you try methods and before you buy products saves you time and money. Ha ha ha. Yeah. So research before you try and buy. Always. Save those coins buy you some products that actually work. <laughs> we are going to practice different application methods, and this goes for everything. So just to give you some perspective on what I mean on this. So I have low porosity hair, and because of that, even things like deep conditioners can really weigh down my hair. But <laughs> I also live in an extremely dry climate, and I need moisture. So what do I do? If I didn't practice how and when I applied deep conditioners, I would have thrown a lot of them out because they weighed down my hair. And that's most of them. Because I practiced and experimented with different application techniques and when I applied the deep conditioner, I was able to make pretty much every single deep conditioner I've ever bought work because I researched it beforehand and I practice my application techniques. <laughs> Just over here cracking myself up. We are going to scalp massage. One of the biggest contributing factors towards the health of your hair is the health of your scalp. There are so many ways to aid and maintain a healthy scalp, and we'll dig into that into another video. One of the most important and immediately tangible ways to start caring for the health of your scalp is the scalp massage. Literally just need your fingertips, minute or two, every single day. You can also spice it up and two or three times a week, use your favorite scalp oil. I'm a big fan of some righteous roots and this thing. This thing is heaven we are going to join a curly community. So whether that is jumping on Instagram and finding some curl friends, whether that is getting on Facebook and joining a curly hair support group, look for a curly hair meetup in your area, whatever it is, find a community to ask questions, get support from. In the description below, I'll be linking my Instagram, which I am active on daily and do a ton of mini tutorials on there. Also, I'm going to link my Facebook group group wavy and curly and coily connect we just hit 3700 members and would love to have you on board it's a really wonderful and positive community of curl friends answering each other's questions offering support etc plus Everyone shares their YouTube tutorials, Instagram tutorials, blogs, etc. So it is also an excellent resource for more of the research that you're going to do before you buy stuff. That wasn't editing, that was me moving myself because I think I'm funny. <laughs> Last but certainly not least, we are going to let go of the expectations that we have for our curls. So I'm just gonna quote myself really quick, like not because it's like groundbreaking, because I said it really well and how I wanna say it and I don't wanna butcher it now. So I'm just gonna quote myself. <laughs> Everything in this healthy curls process takes time. Not all of our wishes are achievable and some magical things we didn't know we'd want or love will happen. The only way to truly enjoy that process is to compare your milestones to no one else's. If every wave curl, kink or coil on that gorgeous head of yours is different, 
then there's no way that it could be the same as another's. <laughs> Nailed it. Just kidding. But really, that's, that's the truth. So let go of your expectations. Stop comparing your curls to another's and jump on board. So there you have it. That is what we are going to stop doing, things we are going to buy, and what we are going to do at the start of our wavy, curly, coily, or kinky hair journey. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if I missed any of your favorite tips for the start of a curly hair journey, please comment them down below and let's all help each other out. Thank you again so much for joining me today. If it was your first time here, my name is Janelle and we do all things curly and then some. If you have not already slammed that subscribe button, what are you waiting for? <laughs> Go slam that subscribe button, hit that bell while you're at it to turn on post notifications so that you do not miss a thing. And I will see you next time. Bye. Real quick, Sheldon and I wanted to bounce back and say thank you so much for 19,000 subscribers. Ah! Ah! We're so excited. <laughs> okay, bye. <laughs>